is next to listen to which one was the first, progressive victim tax and other collective event, or the fact that you pretty much dismissed the idea in your speech yesterday of any sort of restructuring of the pension by having a constitutional change. Well, I've. And I, you, you said, well, the courts have spoken, but, but, but a lot of people, including John Collins, until now, during the Rowley years, are saying the courts have not spoken that there are various schemes that might allow a uh, constitutional amendment that would allow for structuring pensions in a way that reduce the overall burden over the years. Well, I'm looking at reducing the overall burden over the years, too, by bending that, you know, that pension no, the, ramp. Not the burden of paying off pensions, but the actual the amount of pensions. To take away some of people's pensions, and I guess what I would suggest is, number one, there's a, there's a tier two pension system that's been put in place today, about 50% of state workers are in that tier two system, 50% still in the tier one system. It's the tier one system that is um, costly. That is the one that the courts have ruled uh, we must pay. Um, it's also true about tier two, you must pay it. Issue. John Culleton used to argue that was not a separate issue. There are various consideration models and whatnot that we should at least be pursuing he, he has one proposal, um, uh, but it's not a constitutional amendment proposal. Right. Uh, the, uh, he, what he's proposed is the consideration model. Um, and there are uh, experts, I think, on both sides of this subject. John would say he's talked to the right experts um, and believes it would work. Others uh, would say it wouldn't. Uh, and the problem is that it's very difficult to put something up that's um, that where you've got you know essentially two very strong sides of you know is this constitutional and then ask legislators to vote for it uh, and then find out whether it's constitutional or not and you know there have been proposals about could you uh, institute a con consideration model in some jurisdiction to test it with the courts that's something that I think has been proposed but. Look, I think that. What's, what's your view? If, you, if the courts would allow something like this, would you be in favor of a change in the pension so that, for instance, the 3% COLAs were not compounded interest COLAs? I mean, the big thing is this is a slowly increase. Yeah. Would, if it was possible, constitutionally or, or under the law, would you be in favor of anything that would cut a penny from someone's pension? Well, in many ways, we're already doing that with the proposal that. Uh, that I made that, that's actually part of the law today, but I want to extend it and make it permanent. And that is uh, the pension buyouts, because that's essentially what the consideration model would be. This is a pension buyout program that was put into law last year as part of the budget. Um, it does allow the state to buy out the COLAs and the overall pensions for people who choose that. Interestingly, was put into place. People didn't really know whether retirees would choose it. It's optional, and that's why it's allowed, as opposed yeah. to the consideration model, which would be forced on people. Um, uh, the these optional pension buyouts uh, were taken up at a much greater uh, extent than was expected. There was expected to be, I think, about 17 percent of retirees this year who would choose this uh, buyout. Which is good for the state. We, you know, that, that people choose this at least in terms of the pension liability. Um, and uh, instead, 21 percent took it up. Now, one of the things that impedes people choosing this model, choosing this buyout, is the idea that it's not permanent. They don't know whether there's going to be enough money there to pay them out when they want to do it. The people who are planning for their retirement, thinking years ahead, perhaps about when they're going to retire and what they're going to do, uh, about whether to take the buyout or not, they, this program was not permanent. It was only a several year program, I think three years. Um, what we want to do is make it permanent so that people can make the decision about their retirement a little bit earlier and we think mm -hmm. more people might choose to, to be bought out. And again, this is to the point of trying to reduce the uh, overall long-term burden within the pension system. So this is a good thing. This is one of the five prongs of our approach. I'll ask one more question, and then I will be about question. Then let's go to the graduate income tax. In your speech yesterday, you just say it will take 18 months. A lot of people say it will never happen. If it does, it won't take 18 months. You have to get through the legislature, through that, and then you have to get through the voters. And you know what kind of 
question yes. that I have. Is it is it responsible to have a long term budget plan that depends on a graduated income tax that we favor, by the way, that's going to have such a tough time becoming reality? Well, let me begin my answer to your question by saying that it takes 18 months until it can be put in place because I'm going to ask the legislature to vote on it this spring. And if they vote for it, then it will be put on the ballot in November of 2020. And that's roughly the 18 months that we're talking about. It would go into effect January 1 uh, of 2021. Uh, so that's, you know, let's say 18, 20 months from the 22 months, I guess, in total, but 18 months until we would know that it has, in fact, been put into effect. To your question about, you know, well, gee, it's, you know, uh, has a whatever percent chance of, of succeeding, um, I would suggest to you that this is the moment in which we are going to have to make some hard decisions in the state of Illinois. And I think that a graduated income tax is the right decision in the context of the need to overcome a structural deficit and to maintain the services that we need for the people. Now, uh, let me also put it in another context. The Civic Federation, the Civic Committee of the Commercial Club, both came out with plans, proposals, that include uh, a large income tax increase. These are uh, right-leaning, if not Republican-oriented organizations, certainly business organizations, um, and, and they're suggesting a large tax increase as part of a plan to uh, bring recovery to the well, state's actually, fi finances. Well, actually, the city government, they say, to do it as editorial, yeah, we think there should be income tax. It should be done right now with the flat tax. Yes. And we have very little confidence that the graduate, graduate income tax will come on board yeah. in, at any time that makes any sense. So, and they're for an increase in the tax, yes. but they're not at all confident that you're going to get your graduated. So they're Well, let's say this. Fair tax system is a much better system, and you don't get what you don't ask for. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we should ask the people of Illinois and the legislators of Illinois to put the system in that is the fairest. Why is it fairest? I'll just remind you that it asks the wealthiest people in the state to pay more. It gives a break to people in the middle class and those who are striving to get to the middle class. And very importantly, it gives us an opportunity to give real property tax breaks to people all across the state. And this is one of the big challenges we've got to overcome. Do you really, do you really sit here right now and say absolutely that the graduate income tax would give a break to middle income, income people? Because the yes. argument made is that you not only want to restructure who has to pay the income, wealthier people pay more at a higher rate. But you're going to have to increase the overall amount of money pulled out of that income tax. So therefore, a lot of reasonable people, not just the Republicans, say that when you finally get those brackets figured out, it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a reduction in middle class. Well, I've looked if at the math. You're going to be able to look at the math because we're going to make it very transparent to people what it, the rates would be before anybody would vote on the so how long amendment. Does that take? I mean, how, where are you at in that process of figuring all of that out? Well, it's certainly going to happen this session, so before May 31st.